more recent question we had in came in from uh, Barbara McFarlane Allen. Uh, this topic of kilts on women. Uh, she herself is not a skilt wearer, uh, a, a skirt wearer normally, um, but uh, and she doesn't know if she'd want to invest in a kilt. Uh, but she does like wearing her clan tartan. Is it okay for a woman to wear a <clears throat> kilt, a tartan kilt? Um, where does it tip the balance of being a good ambassador? Thank you for using our phrase. Uh, versus being an ugly American as a woman wearing, I'm assuming she means a man's kilt. Right. Is that too <clears throat> fashion forward or is that cool or is there a precedent for it? Um, with a lot of this stuff, it's just personal preference to a degree. And the other side of it is women are going to do what women are going to do with fashion. There's there's a lot more restrictions on men's fashion than there are on women's fashion. Women, women break a lot more rules than men do. Um, Traditionally speaking, using my uh, uh, air quotes, air quotes, my ever present air quotes, I apologize for that. Um, the men wear the kilt to the knee, women wear the kilt above the knee or below the knee. That being said, women bagpipers will wear the kilt to the knee. Um, if it's uh, if women feel odd wearing mini skirts or things above the knee, but they don't want to be matronly and have it like you know, mid calf or ankle length, that kind of thing. They just kind of wear it whatever length up and down the leg scale um, mm. they want to wear it. So it does look more masculine. As I've started wearing kilts, you know, for the 20 years, whatever I've been wearing them, I can now kind of, I've developed a sense of what feels more masculine or feels more feminine within the whole thing. So wearing a kilt to the knee feels more masculine than wearing it above the knee. And I'm not talking, you know, micro mini, you know, obscene short. I mean, like two or three inches above the knee is still feminine versus, you know, middle of the knee or very top of the knee, which is a little bit more masculine. Is that a fair point? Uh, it's certainly the conventional point. It's basically a con the, that yeah. That's the I'm coming from a from a traditional yeah. angle. So I've seen we've had several uh, ladies or customers who've uh, gotten uh, men's style kilts custom made um, for uh, things like weddings. So if you want to have a more uh, unisex or androgynous or masculine look, that's cool. That's definitely still an American thing, I think. Um, you talk about being a, an ugly American ambassador. I wouldn't really do it if I were going over to Scotland for vacation yeah. or something. Yeah. Um, stateside, you know, we we're much more flexible with this kind of thing. Um, and I've definitely, we've definitely had several customers who do it, usually for a special occasion because of the cost involved, as you pointed out, Barbara. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, like, like you said, I mean, women's fashion varies crazily, uh, and is more volatile and, uh, you can play with it more. You have more lacrity. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, we definitely, there, there is a precedent. It's a small precedent, but there's a precedent for women doing it just because they like the look for whatever reason. And I've definitely had women who are on the groom side in a wedding, for instance, you know, they're part of the wedding yeah. party. So they want, they want the same outfit as everybody else. So, um, yeah. so you can do it. And the other thing I'd say is it's when, when I'm explaining it or talking about things, I'm, I'm explaining the, the rules or conventions. It's sure. not really that yeah. you, you are not allowed to, or you're allowed to it's, this is how it's typically done. It's also done other ways. Ultimately, that's why I started out with it's personal preference. It's where do you land on it? You're the one wearing it out in public. You're the one who's going to have people coming up to you and asking you questions about your heritage or talking to you about the kilt or that kind of stuff. So how much do you want to engage or open yourself up to a potential comment of why are you wearing a man's kilt? Ultimately, I don't think a lot of people would ask you, why are you wearing a man's kilt? So it's not yeah. that big of a deal. Yeah. Some people might if they're like uber kilt traditionalists, but it's it's going to be a You probably don't want to hang out with them. Well, if, if you're you trying to hang, hang out with them, but it's she's asking an honest question. And I'm just giving an honest. Sure, sure. Here's here's the scale. It's not our job to pass judgment. We are not here to tell people what you're allowed to do or not allowed to do. It's our job, or the way I see it, is it's our job to kind of interpret how it's done, what the conventions are, what the traditional angle is, and then leave it on the table for you guys to decide what you want to do, what you're comfortable doing. Because ultimately, when you're out at the Highland Games, the grocery store, wherever you go, we're not there with you. You're the ones wearing it. So you have to be comfortable doing it. I'll say, I'll say this. If you're worried about being a, an ugly American... Um, but you still want to be you. You still want to do your thing and express yourself. Um, we like to say it comes down to being a sincere student of the culture. 
if you decide to be fashion forward or or non-conventional with your look, then think in terms of other ways that you can demonstrate or at least internalize the fact that you have a passion for the roots of this stuff. That basically there are other ways you can discuss things, you can be knowledgeable things, you can present things uh, that come up in conversation, uh, which really prove that you have taken ownership. So that's, I think, being a, I love the term, I picked it up years ago, but being a sincere student of the culture is really what it's all about. Yeah. So. And the other thing I would give as, as a bit of practical advice, if you're concerned and if you want to kind of hedge your bets, maybe you just do two inches, two and a half inches above the knee. You don't go mini kilt, but you don't go full man's kilt. You go, you split the difference. Mm -hmm. That may be a way to do it if... The, the reason she may be asking is maybe she's not comfortable with the look of her legs or she feels a little bit insecure about certain things. Maybe. So I'm just trying to kind of get into her head a little bit and figure a way to Don't know. to keep it a little bit more on the feminine traditionalist side, but give her a little bit more length in it. I don't know. Or it could be her family tartan is not available in 11 ounce wool, which is what most of the women's stuff is made out of. So maybe she's thinking yeah. about a man's kilt because she's it's the only way she can find her tartan. Because it's only thirteen or sixteen ounce wool. Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of variables in this. Yeah. So.